Welcome back, squad. You are listening to another episode of Full Ride, powered by You Recruit You. This is your athletic scholarship coach, Quito Delgado, and I am so glad you've tuned in yet again. And I can't wait to give you this week's winning play. But before we get started, I want to congratulate all of my high school seniors who have graduated from high school. That is quite the accomplishment. Um, and I'm just happy for you. It's an exciting time. And uh, I just hope you are enjoying um, your celebrations, your barbecues. But for all my athletes, I really hope you are um, certainly fitting in a workout or two in between those uh, those hamburgers, those hot dogs, and those uh, those potato chips. Um, but all kidding aside, congratulations, enjoy it. Um, but just remember now um, that what got you to this point won't keep you here, right? So you got to take it to the next level, particularly, well, really any of you, even if you're not playing high school athletics at the next level. No matter what, um, it's time to take your game, if you will, to that next level. So uh, that's my little words of wisdom for you. And uh, today we are talking about, I think it's appropriate, seeing that it is the summertime. And mom, dad, I know you guys are getting bombarded uh, with requests for your student athletes to attend um, camps, uh, tournaments, showcases, combines, and uh, it can all add up in a hurry. Uh, not only does it add up from a um, cost standpoint, but then also your time, right? Your time is very precious. So what I want to do during this um, episode of Full Ride is just explain to you the different types of um, events that you should be considering attending, um, the difference between the two, um, but then really give you that winning play um, that will help guide you in determining which ones uh, to attend, all right? And we're going to try to do all that within the next 10 to 12 minutes or so. So, um, so there are different types of events. Um, for the most part, you have four of them. You have a camp, you have a combine, you have showcases, and you have tournaments. So we'll start with camps. Um, now, camps... Um, they, they range. So at the middle school um, and even early high school level, um, you have a normal camp at, at, say, your high school. And this is usually put on by the high school coach. Um, usually there's some expense to it, but it's local. It's not too expensive. Um, and just understand, though, when you go to these camps, the idea really should be developing skill. Skill development, Right. Um, so that's in the early phases, but then as you advance, as you get older, you know, your 10th grade year, your 11th grade year, um, you can start attending camps held by colleges, um, which is then a great opportunity for a student athlete to play in front of a, a college um, coach or a program that they might want to play for at, one, at, at some point in time. So that is a, a great opportunity, but yeah, you got camps. At the very beginning, you want to really focus on your skill development. So 7th, 8th, ninth grade years, it's all about the skill. So pay attention to make sure um, that, you know, if you have high quality coaches, um, you know, teaching you at these camps. And then as you get older, you're going to start going to camps at colleges held by schools. And you just want to make sure if you go to those camps, you only want to go to a camp held by a college if it's a school on your target list, right? If you are a Division II caliber player, and this is where you have to be really honest with yourself, if you're a Division II player, it makes very little sense for you to attend a Division I coach. I mean, I'm sorry, a Division I camp. Very little sense. So just remember that. Um, as you are choosing these camps. So choose wisely there. Um, now, combines are usually one, two-day type events. 
Um, and these are events that are held um, to help test a student athlete's athleticism. Um, they'll involve specific conditioning drills um, that maybe access your speed, your strength, um, your jumping ability, and just really your overall skill. Think about it, if you play football, you have the 40 yard dash. Um, if you're a volleyball player and you go to one of these teams, they're definitely gonna test your vertical. Um, you know, with basketball, you got three cone drills, you got dribbling drills, you got shooting drills. So there's all types of different ways in which they can assess you. I um, mean, and combines um, really don't usually require an invitation unless you are like an elite player. And, you know, you know, an Under Armour or an Adidas or Rivals or something like that. They have a, you know, big time showcase combine and they're only inviting the elite of the elite. But for the most part, combines are not invite. Anyone can attend. And what you need to understand is they will, they, they will let you come pretty much every time because as long as you are writing that check. As long as you show up with a check, they'll let you attend any combine for the most part. I mean, there are, like I said, some invites. So if you know that, you need to understand, don't get wooed, you know, don't be romancing and thinking, oh, wow, we have an invite from this camp. I mean, this combine, we should attend. They must really want me or, you know, what I mean? like, it's, that's not how it works. Same thing with, with camps. If a college coach invites you to attend the camp, just understand in many instances, they're just casting a wide net. And then the money, the revenue generated from that camp helps support the program. So they're not necessarily, even if you are personally invited by the coach, just the reality here, um, they're not always doing so because they really think um, you can play for their school. They're just doing it because they want that revenue to support their athletic department. So same thing with a combine. Before attending a combine, one thing I really want you to recommend, I really recommend doing is looking at what schools are going to be there. That is crucial, absolutely crucial, right? If no schools are there, or there's a button now, let's say on the flip side, earlier I said if you were a Division II player, let's say you are a Division I caliber player, right? Legit Division I caliber player. You have no business attending a combine where there's all Division III schools, for the most part. I mean, if you know, you know, you've gotten some interest from schools, you know, you've, you've heard, you know, from a college coach or two, and, they will, and, and it's pretty much confirmed, yeah, you're a Division I talent and it's your desire to play at that level, well, then now you got to focus on, you know, time and money. It's not a good use of your time attending, attending a combine where the types of schools you want to play for aren't there. And that's why this is so critical. And I'm going to do probably different episodes in the, past, in the future on this. This is why it's so important, families, for you to have your target list in order. You gotta have a target list because the target list governs a lot of the decisions that you make as a family, like which camps, which combines to attend. Because you can literally bring out your checklist of schools and you can see, oh, well, you know what? At this combine, 10 of my schools are gonna be there. That's a good combine for you to attend. So that's why you have to have a target list. Um, the next is a showcase, and the showcase is very similar um, to a combine. Um, you know, it's the only difference that I would say is that it's a combination. So you still have your sport-specific drills, but then in some instances, what they'll do is that they'll actually let the campers or the student athletes compete against one another. So a combine is more about okay, you run a forty-yard dash, you do a, you know, um, the vertical jump, you know, you do shooting drills, whatever the case may be. Um, but now with showcases, you do that, but then there's an element of competition where you're going head to head against other student athletes. So just know that. And then the last one is tournaments, right? Um, let's think about it from football. You got your seven on sevens. If it's AAU, you have your AAU tournaments, all those types of events, um, soccer, same thing. Tournaments are, you know, those, and I'm sure many of you parents, you know this, you go to these tournaments, 
on the weekends, you know, and you're there, you know, on a Saturday, Sunday, right? Well, I just want to let you know that not all tournaments um, are the same. You can't treat them all the same. And again, in the early ages, you know, seventh, eighth grade, that type of stuff, um, it's not as important to pay close attention to the type of team you are playing for, right, that travels to these tournaments. And this is what I mean. I probably didn't explain that the best. A lot of teams, anybody can put together a team. Pretty much any coach around locally can put together an AAU team or a travel soccer team. It's not that difficult. I'm not saying a lot of work doesn't go into it, so don't get mad, coaches. I'm just saying it's not difficult to really just put together a team. The key, though, is you want to make sure you are playing for a team as you get older now. Again, earlier ages, it's not as important. You know, that's more about skill development, in my opinion. If you are going to play on a travel team and you are going to tournaments, it's just about learning to compete and, and all that type of stuff. But as you get older, you want to make sure you play for a team that attends tournaments that have college coaches there. Let me say that again. As you get older, I'm talking ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade year, and you're on a travel team, and this travel team plays in all these different tournaments, it makes absolutely no sense for you to play for a team that does not play in front of college coaches. It's just a complete waste of time and your money. Again, if you're trying to be a recruited athlete, this is where you have to be strategic. You have to understand you, you putting up 40 points you know, in a local gym for a tournament without any college coaches there doesn't really matter. So you really want to make sure, um, this is maybe for another, another episode, but you really want to make sure as your student athlete advances, you are picking a, a team, a travel team that plays in tournaments that have college coaches in attendance. All right. And um, so those are your four different types of events. All right. I hope that's very helpful to you. One thing I just kind of want to add to it, particularly with the combines, um, the camps, the showcases. There are different um, recruiting periods. I'm not going to drill down too much into it, um, but I just want to want to introduce you to this concept. There are recruiting periods, and it's very important for you to know that as you are looking to attend these camps and these combines, these showcases, you don't want to attend a camp or a combine during a quiet or a dead period. All right. In a nutshell, these are periods throughout the recruiting season where college coaches cannot have contact with student athletes. And I'm just, for time's sake, I'm just glossing over all the different details. But just understand, there are certain periods, a quiet period and a dead period, where a college coach can't even recruit, I mean, can't be around you. They can't talk to you. They can't observe you in action. So if you're going to this combine, <laughs> you're going to this showcase, with the belief that you're going to be seen, well, the reality is you're not going to be seen if it's during a quiet period or a dead period. And I'll be honest, many of these showcases um, and combines, they do a pretty good job coordinating that, at least the ones that are very ethical and honest, because that is what they're selling at the end of the day. They're, they're selling you exposure. So they will, for the most part, do a good job making sure it's not during that period of time. Um, but just for you as a family, be proactive. Go to the NCAA website, look at the different calendars, recruiting periods, and educate yourself on that, and then be really strategic about the camps. So now, here's your winning play, and we'll get you out of here because we're approaching the 15 minute mark. I always try, I try to keep it under 15 minutes, but here's your winning play, family. I need you guys to sit down, and if you haven't, this is always gonna be a winning play. You always have to have your, your, um, your target list. Point blank, you have to have your target list. If you don't have your target list in place, a lot of what I'm saying doesn't, it, it really hampers you. So if you haven't done so already, your number one target on winning play is to put together your target list of schools. You have to do it. Stop procrastinating on that. But after that, the winning play I wanna to touch on um, is 
you have to take it a next step. You just can't attend. Now, again, if you're in the seventh, eighth grade, maybe even ninth grade, it's not as important. But now, if we get into your 10th grade year, 11th grade year, simply attending a, camp, a combine, simply attending a camp, a showcase, that's not enough. Because these coaches go to these events and they have a list. They, they're pretty much locked in on who they want to evaluate. So it's critical. Your winning play is you need to be proactive. You need to reach out to the coach in advance. Email them. Call them. Send them a direct message on Twitter, whatever the case is, and say, hey, coach, I'm going to be at the camp. I'm going to be at this showcase. Include the date. And there you go. That's the first step. So family, as you guys are evaluating which camps to go to, also your winning play is you need to go to these schools' websites, find out the coach, do your best to see who's going to be in attendance, and reach out to them directly. Let them know you're going to be there. You guys do that with all the schools on your target list, preferably. Even if they aren't going to be, you guys say, hey, I just want you to know I'm going to be at this particular combine not sure if you're going to have an opportunity to make it, but I just want to let you know I'm going to be there. Right? And then I'll even give you a bonus. Not only do you want to contact them before camp or before the showcase, before the combine, you need to follow up afterwards. So you got to be proactive. You got to call before, you got to call after. But that's all I got this week. I hope this is helpful to you. I just want to encourage you uh, to give the show an assist. Make sure you share this episode uh, with all of your uh, family and, and your friends, your teammates. Um, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at You Recruit You. That's You Recruit You. And then like our Facebook page. Just search You Recruit You on Facebook. We'll pop up. Uh, give us a like. But until next time, this is your head recruiting coach, Quito Delgado, uh, reminding you that recruiting starts with you. What steps are you taking today to earn an athletic scholarship tomorrow? Go compete.